In the previous video, we discussed how to determine whether a state is a safe state or an unsafe state using Banker's algorithm. Now let's see how to use Banker's algorithm for avoiding deadlock. Suppose we have three processes P0, P1 and P2 which will use three resource types R0, R1 and R2 during their execution. Suppose the system is having a maximum of 4 instances of R0, 5 instances of R1 and 5 instances of R2. Suppose the processes have already claimed that what will be the maximum number of instances of each resource type they will use during their execution. Let P0 has claimed that it will use a maximum of 4 instances of R0, 1 instance of R1 and 2 instances of R2 during its execution. Similarly, the other processes did. Assume that this system is using a deadlock avoidance scheme with Banker's algorithm. So suppose the system executed for a while, the processes executed for a while and at time t1 let the processes or let the system reach this state in which some resources are already allocated to the processes. Since some resources are already allocated, now the available resources will get reduced. Two instances of R0 are already allocated. Now we have remaining only 4 minus 2, 2 instances of 4 minus 2, 2 instances of R0. Then 5 minus 3, 2 instances of R1, 5 minus 5, 0 instance of R2. And since some resources are already allocated, from now on, the maximum future need of the processes will change. P0 is allocated with one instance of R0, so in the future it will need a maximum of 4 minus 1, 3 instances of R0, then 1 minus 0, 1 instance of R1, 2 minus 2, 2 instances of R2, similarly for other processes. So this is the state of the system at time T1. Here as I said, this, we assume the system is using a deadlock avoidance scheme with Banker's algorithm. A deadlock avoidance method keep the system always in a safe state. So assume that from the beginning onward, the system passed through a series of safe states and finally reached this state at time T1. And assume, not assume, this state is also a safe state. We shall confirm whether the state is a safe state. If the state is a safe state with these available resources, we will be able to complete the execution of all these three processes by granting their maximum future needs by executing them in some sequence. So check whether it is possible. Can we execute P0 now with these available resources? No. Because P0 needs three instances of R0, we, are, we have only two instances of R0. Can we execute P1? 1 is less than 2. 2 equals 2. 0 equals 0. Yes, we can execute P1. And when P1 completes execution, the available resources will increase it will become 220 plus 031 because the resources which are granted now and the resources previously held by it all of the resources will be released once p1 completed execution so the available resources now is 220 plus 031 now we have 251 this much resources available with these increased resources can we execute any other process we cannot execute p0 now but can we execute p2 0 is less than 2 2 is less than 5 1 equals 1 yes we can execute p2 and when p2 completes the execution the available resources become 251 plus 102 
now we have three five three this much resources available now can we execute p0 3 equals 3 1 less than 5 0 less than 3 yes we can execute p0 so we can complete the execution of all these three processes by granting their maximum future needs by allocate by executing them in some sequence so this state is a safe state so till now the system is in safe state suppose at this moment system is receiving a new request from p0 p0 is requesting for one instance of r1 since we are using a deadlock avoidance scheme this request can be granted only if this request will move the system to a safe state so this is the current state of the system if this request is granted what will be the next state of the system we should figure it out if one instance of R1 is allocated to P0, the allocated matrix becomes 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 1 and 1, 0, 2. And the available vector changes from 2, 2, 0 to 2, 1, 0. And the future maximum need matrix changes from 3, 1, 0 to 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, 1. So if this request is granted, this will be the next state of the system. Now use Banker's algorithm to determine whether this next state will be a safe state or an unsafe state. Now the Banker's algorithm checks whether with this available resources, it's possible to complete the execution of all the three processes in some sequence by allocating them their maximum needs. Here we have two instances of R1, one in R0, one instance of R1 and zero instance of R2. Is it possible to complete the execution of at least one process now? Can we execute P0? No. We need three instances of R0. It's not possible. Can we execute P1 now? We need two instances of R1. Here we have only one instance of R1. So that's not possible. Can we execute P2? Here we need two instances of R1. We do not have that much resources available. So it's not possible to execute any of these processes. We should be able to execute all the three processes in some sequence. Then only it can be a safe state. So this is an unsafe state. It means if this request is granted, we will move to an unsafe state. So in deadlock avoidance scheme, we will avoid moving to such an unsafe state. For that, this request will not be granted. So that request will not be granted and the system will remain in the safe state itself. Now suppose after some time the system received another request from P1. P1 is requesting for one instance of R0. So first we will find out if this request is granted what will be the next state of the system. The allocated matrix becomes 102, 131 and 102. The available vector changes from 2202 to 120. The maximum future needs changes from 310 and 1 becomes here 0, 310, 0, 020 and 0, 021. P1 is allocated with one instance of R0, so in the future it will not request for any more instances of R0. So if this request is granted, this will be the next state of the system. Now use Banger's algorithm to determine whether the state will be a safe state or an is a safe state or an unsafe state. Now Banger's algorithm checks whether with these available resources we are able to execute all the three processes in some sequence by allocating them their maximum future needs. Now is it possible to execute at least one process with these available resources? We cannot execute P0 but we can execute P1 now. If we execute P1 now the available resources will increase. 
131. The new available resources is 251. With this increased number of available resources, can we execute any other process? Even now we cannot execute P0 but we can execute P2. So execute P2. Now the available resources become 251 plus 102. 353. With these available resources, can we execute the third process P0? 3 is equal to 3, 1 less than 5, 0 less than 3. Yes, it's possible to execute P0. It means all the three processes can be executed. So here the next state is a safe state. So there is no problem with granting this request. So this request will be granted and the system will actually move to this next state. So here system will always remain in a safe state. Whenever some request is received, system will check if that request is granted, whether the next state will be a safe state or an unsafe state. To check whether that next state will be a safe state or an unsafe state, we use banker's algorithm. If banker's algorithm finds out that that state will be a safe state, then the request will be granted and the system will move to that safe state. If banker's Banker's algorithm finds out that that state will be an unsafe state, then that request will not be granted. System will not move to that state, will remain in the previous state itself. This is how deadlock avoidance scheme works with Banker's algorithm.